A parent has a duty to not only love, but to protect and provide for their child as well. However, the way life goes, this is not always the case. Some parents do things that no one else would do to their own child. Keep watching to hear about Lacey Fletcher and how her parents would end up being the end of her. Welcome to AF Crime, the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, then this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Let's dive right into the video and find out more about Lacey and what led to her death. In the town of Slaughter, Louisiana, lived Clay, the president for a nonprofit Civil War roundtable, and Sheila Fletcher, an alderman for the town. On November 25, 1985, they would bring Lacey Ellen Fletcher into the world and called her their daughter. From the moment she was born, she lived a very normal life like any other kid in her neighborhood. She attended Brownsville Baptist Academy, where she was popular and had many friends. She even played in their volleyball team. Outside of school, she was just as normal, going to church with her family and living the life of a growing child. At one point during her schooling life, she was diagnosed with autism. As time passed by, things began to change for Fletcher as her condition began to get worse. Those around her would not only be able to tell what she was going through, as she was always very cheerful and friendly as well. Around the age of 14, she developed a form of Asperger's syndrome, which caused her to have trouble getting along with those in her age group and start isolating herself from them as well. A boy's father who lived close by in her neighborhood, Robert Blades, mentioned that as other girls were becoming more interested in things like makeup and boyfriends, Lacey remained into things like country music and Disney movies. He also mentioned that she was smart as hell, but she wasn't as mature. Although Lacey was going through all of these things at once, she was still trying her best to overcome them. She would constantly go to the school therapist to talk about her increasing social anxiety and isolation from others. Any other kid who knew her would have said that she was fun and normal. In the end, however, her parents deemed that she was not making any progress in that aspect and took her out of school and decided to homeschool her. Being only a teenager, she was forced to comply with this degrading, one-sided decision which would not help her get better at all. During this same time is when the world started to see less and less of Lacey Ellen Fletcher. She wouldn't be seen outside anymore, wouldn't be in contact with her friends, and was not even going to church with her parents anymore. When asked about the last time that she was seen, Blade stated that he had seen her on multiple occasions lifting weights outside of her home around the time that she would have been 21 years old. However, he did not approach her as he saw no reason to say anything to her at the time. Roughly five years before Fletcher's body would be discovered, Blades would also question her father on her whereabouts after not having seen her for a while. He asked if she had married and moved away, to which Clay responded, she's still here, she's fine and quickly changed the topic of their conversation. Regardless of why she was isolating herself, the last anyone had seen of her, she was still a young and healthy woman who seemed as normal as anyone else. Sheila and Clay seemed to be well-liked individuals within their neighborhood. As well as being alderman, Sheila was also a secretary at a prosecutor's office working closely with the law enforcement, which is ironic. At the round table which Clay served, many of his colleagues found it very difficult to associate what he did with his person. Another member of the table even said that the only time that Clay ever mentioned that he had a daughter was shortly after she passed away in their home. From what anyone could tell, they seemed like a nice and happy married couple. They liked to help out in the community events, attended LSU football games, and even went out to social family gatherings. However, their daughter Lacey was never seen out with them after she became more reclusive. One of her longtime middle school friends mentioned that she noticed Sheila had not posted a picture of Lacey on her Facebook since around 2011. That is weird because her father had already stated that she was still living at home, so where was Lacey really at? Along with that, the Fletchers had not had guests in their home for over a decade, so there was no chance for anyone to know of her condition. 
no one would have been able to suspect the horrors that were going on in their home. After being out of town on one of their usual getaway trips on January 3rd, 2022, police received a call from Sheila Fletcher. She called for an ambulance as her daughter was no longer breathing. What the first responders saw when they arrived would shock them forever. As they walked in, they were greeted by the putrid smell of a rotting corpse. After stepping inside, they came across a lifeless Lacey sitting on the remains of a couch. Where she sat, there was a gaping hole which was filled with her own feces and urine. Although in the room she was found in, they also found a porta potty next to the couch, as well as a pair of clothes and many children's movies. The reports say that she had been sitting for so long that her skin had begun to fuse to the fabric on the couch. Apart from being nothing but skin and bones, what remained of her body was covered in sores, ulcers, and even maggots, as well as bodily fluids where they should not be, such as her hair, nose, and even inside her ears. While the first responders attended to the horrifying scene, Sheila simply sat with her head between her legs, slightly crying. On the other hand, it is said that Clay Fletcher sat there with an emotionless expression and had nothing to say. Once they began the autopsy on her corpse, even worse details began to come to light. Being a fully grown woman, one would have expected her to weigh more than 96 pounds at the time of her death. However, finding pieces of the couch inside her stomach showed that she was not being fed properly and was literally starving. As mentioned, her body was also thoroughly covered in sores and ulcers, some which had shown previous signs of healing. There were even secretions of her skin which had simply rotted off in a frostbite-like effect. The autopsy revealed that the gaping sores and ulcers on her body had developed sitting in her own excrement and that Lacey had to have been in pain as they had been developing for nearly 12 years. The coroner who performed this autopsy stated that not only did he not eat for a week after, but that he had never seen such a case of medical neglect in his career. When the case broke, so did many other details of her life. In 2010, it was revealed by a physician that Lacey's parents had come into their office seeking help on what to do with Lacey. They mentioned that she was a recluse and her social anxiety was constantly increasing to the point that she didn't want to leave the house anymore. The doctors urged them to bring Lacey in because she was in dire need of help, but they ended up leaving and never bringing her in. The next time that she would see a doctor would be when her corpse was being examined. Lacey Fletcher's autopsy also revealed that she was positive for COVID-19. All of this put together allowed the medical examiner to rule her passing due to medical neglect from her parents. Everything that she endured from being chronically malnourished, neglected, and left in her own bodily waste led to her developing sepsis and passing away in the living room of her own home. The ruling led to criminal charges being presented to both Clay and Sheila, which they would have to answer to in front of a grand jury. At the time of the trial, both parents claimed that Lacey was mentally sound and she was sitting on that couch out of her own free will. According to them, she did not want to leave the couch at all and she would even relieve herself on it even though they provided a porta potty. Once the photos of their home were presented at the trial, many of the jurors gasped in horror at the grisly images. The nature of the trial, along with all of the evidence presented, led the jury to charge the parents with second degree murder charges and to serve a life sentence with no parole. However, soon after being arrested, they were both able to collect enough money to post their bail and are currently out of prison. While they are currently still out, they are set to attend trial for the murder of their daughter sometime next year, where they will hopefully serve the time they deserve. How do you feel about this case? Let us know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. To stay up to date with our videos, hit the bell to be notified when they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.